we want to extend the concepts of limits and continuity into higher dimensions. So in this video, I'll sort of just give you the definitions of how these work out in higher dimensions and make some comments on them. And then in the next videos, I'll work through several examples. So to start, let f of x, f of x1, I'm just writing x arrow for short, but this is a function of n real variables. So this is a function rn to r, again, eg r3 to r. And if q, so q arrow is a point um, in rn with coordinates q1 through qn, and l is a real number, then we say that the limit as x goes to q of f of x is l, or we might write this out as x1 xn goes to q1 qn and write f of x1 through xn. Um, but we, we, so we say that this uh, limit is equal to L if for every epsilon greater than zero, we can come up with a delta, there exists delta greater than zero, such that the distance between f of x and L, so this is an absolute value of numbers, is less than epsilon whenever uh, the distance between x and q is less than delta and greater than zero. Uh, now here this point, this point q, this is allowed to be any point in the domain of f or a boundary point of the domain of f. So if like this is if this is the domain of f then we can evaluate f we could look at a sequence that's converging to, uh, so if Q is on the boundary here, we could look at a sequence inside the domain of F, which converges to, uh, converges to Q and evaluate F on those things. Uh, so we can uh, talk about the limit of f going towards q, even if f is not defined at q. Okay, but that's just for limits. Now let me talk about continuity. So definition, uh, we say, so same notation, we say that f is continuous at the point Q if, so Q now has to be in the domain of F and the limit as X goes to Q of F of X uh, this exists and is equal 
to f of q. Uh, so now in order to evaluate, yeah, in order to evaluate this of q, uh, in order to even evaluate f of q, of course, it has to be uh, in the domain of f. Uh, and then we say that f is continuous. So just continuous is supposed to continuous at a specific point. If it's continuous at every point, of its domain. Now we can let me uh, illustrate a point that we made in the last lecture. So we could also consider um, could also consider f from R n to Rm, so functions with multiple outputs. And so this will be consist of F1, X, Fm, X. So M functions. Well, then F is continuous if and only if each F1 and fm are all continuous. However, so so it's uh, a function with multiple outputs has is continuous if and only if it's sort of each output slot is continuous. However, it is not the case that f is continuous if it's continuous in each input variable separately. So I'll give some examples and like say more clearly what I mean by that uh, in the next videos. But this is just another example of uh, we can separate outputs, we can't separate inputs. Okay, so uh, as an example of working with this definition, I'd like to show you following. So I'm going to define P of X, Y. So P is for, for plus P of X, Y is just X plus Y. And I want to show that this is continuous uh, on all of R2, so it's continuous on its entire domain. Okay, so proof, so let x0, y0 be a point in R2. What we need to show is, so, and let epsilon greater than zero be given to us. We need to show that we can find delta and then zero such that x plus y minus x zero plus y zero is less than epsilon uh, whenever x y minus x zero y zero. So First one's an absolute value, the second one is a vector length, um, is less than delta. Okay, so if we require that x minus x zero is absolute value less than epsilon over two, and also y minus y zero is absolute value less than epsilon over two, then we can rewrite, so x y minus x0, y0 is x minus x0 plus y minus y0. And then this is less than equal to 
absolute value x plus x zero or minus x zero plus absolute value y minus y zero. So here this is the triangle inequality. Uh, and then that is less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two equals epsilon. So uh, what we've shown here is, so if this is x0, y0, then what we've shown is that uh, we'll get what we need provided that x0 or xy is in uh, this, this diamond. So these are both length epsilon over 2. Um, but what we really needed to show was we need to use the normal distance uh, between two points in the plane as opposed to this absolute value distance. But we can fix that by considering a disk uh, inscribed in this diamond, uh, and then the radius of that disk, that'll give us the delta that we're looking for. Okay, finally, let me talk about limit laws. So I want to give a slightly different perspective on these. So first of all, the most important property of continuous functions is if f is continuous at x and g is continuous at f of x, then the composed function g compose f is continuous at x. So here I've been a little uh, ambiguous about what the domain of these functions is, but let's say f takes in uh, n variables and has m outputs. In order to compose with g, I need to make sure that these are the same, and then g could have whatever number of outputs. And so then g compose f would take in n numbers and spit out k of them. So the limit laws then are going to say things like limit as x goes to q of f of x plus g of x, assuming the limits of both f and g exist, this is the limit as uh, x goes to q of f of x plus the limit of g. And then there's similar rules for, say, the product of two functions, or maybe the, the dot product if these had vector outputs. And basically, we can pull the limit inside and do stuff like this. Uh, so what I wanted to explain is so the full list of limit laws uh, is in the textbook. But uh, what I wanted to explain is how to see these in terms of uh, in terms of the example we just did. So uh, so f of x plus g of x, this is, so we forgot, this is p of f of x, g of x, where p of x, y is x plus y, uh, as we uh, did just now. Then since this is continuous, as we just showed, The limit of this, well, by properties of being a continuous, or by definition of being a continuous function, this means we can pull the limit 
inside. Uh, so this this addition law uh, is just a consequence of the fact that the addition function uh, from R2 to R is continuous. And then similarly, the rest of the, uh, if we define like m x y m for multiplication equals x y, this is continuous, and then that will imply the uh, the limit law for multiplication. <laughs>